Okay, we're moving on to chapter three of the textbook, which is on probabilistic models. Uh, we're going to start with uh, univariate distributions. So we're going to go uh, quite quickly uh, through uh, kind of uh, some more kind of foundation, foundational stuff uh, that we need uh, before we can get into uh, the meat of some interesting learning. Um, uh, so let's go, we're going to go quickly through a couple of different uh, distributions. Uh, so the first one is perhaps the simplest distribution that we can imagine, uh, at, which is a Bernoulli distribution. Uh, a Bernoulli distribution is a distribution that applies to a variable with two options, a binary variable. So y can be either 0 or 1. And a uh, Bernoulli distribution has one parameter, theta, uh, which is some probability between 0 and 1. And the Bernoulli value, uh, the probability that y equals 1 given theta is uh, theta. Uh, uh, and conversely, the probability that y equals 0 is 1 minus theta. So Bernoulli distribution is the distribution of a coin flip for a weighted coin with some uh, probability theta. Uh, uh, one way to write this, so one way to write this is using this uh, uh, piecewise notation, where here we have uh, probability of y, there's two options, uh, y equals 1 and y equals 0, and we can write them both here. Uh, an, an equivalent way is we could have written instead Bernoulli Uh, another way we could have written instead Bernoulli of y equals 1 given theta equals uh, theta. And if we wanted to be uh, really pedantic, we could have done the same thing and put uh, y equals 0 here and put 1 minus theta. Uh, another trick that we can use here is like this. So now we're kind of taking y as an input and we're using this notation where y is 1. Let's look at the case where y equals 1 first. So y equals 1, we get theta here. 1 minus theta is 0. So this whole term becomes 1, and we get just theta. Uh, and conversely, if y equals 0, then this second, uh, this first term becomes 0, uh, becomes 1, sorry. The exponent becomes 0. The whole term becomes 1. And the exponent of the second term, the second factor becomes one, and we get just one minus theta. Uh, so again, all these ways are just uh, equivalent ways of writing the same thing. This this kind of syntactic trick, where we use uh, the exponent but being either zero or one to kind of select one of these two options, we're going to see a bunch of times. So so uh, uh, to have a look out for it. Um, now, in general, when we have some variable y, notice we've written y in uppercase to denote that y is a random variable. We use this notation here, the squiggle. Uh, this notation means y is distributed according to a Bernoulli with parameter theta. The second distribution we're going to look at is the binomial distribution. Uh, binomial distribution applies to a integer between 0 up to n. Uh, and a binomial distribution is what you get if you flip n coins, this n here, each with some probability theta of coming up heads. Uh, and the probability for some particular number of heads, s, is like this. Uh, this second term is what you'd expect theta to the, that should be an s. This is a mistake in the textbook. Uh, uh, times one minus theta to n n minus s because we've had we've had tails come up n minus n minus s times, uh, and then we have this uh, additional factor here, which is all of the possible orders that would give us that many heads and that many tails, uh, and you need that because this second factor here shows you the probability of a specific order of heads and tails. Uh, so uh, for example, if you want to know the possibility of one heads, that heads could be at position one or position two, position three, uh, and so on. 
and this accounts for that. This uh, is the, the value of this, uh, this factor here is the binomial coefficient n factorial over s fa uh, factorial times n minus s factorial. Uh, another distribution we're going to need to use is the categorical distribution. Uh, the categorical distribution is kind of the uh, multivariate extension of the Bernoulli distribution. So uh, categorical distribution can be applied when, when y can be one of a number of categories. So let's see, uh, uh, I, y can be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, up to 10, let's say. Uh, I, the categorical distribution is just like the Bernoulli distribution. We have a, as our parameters, a vector of, in this case, 10 mu values, uh, which are specifically these uh, theta parameters. And we're going to use this same trick as we did with the Bernoulli distribution. So, uh, our categorical distribution for a given y is defined as we take a product for each of the different categories and we take theta c, that's the parameter that uh, corresponds to category c, and we put that to the indicator function of whether y equals c. So this is going to be the same trick as before. So notice that if y does not equal c, this thing will be 0 which means that this whole term will be one and it won't contribute to our product. Vice versa, if y equals c, this will be a one. So uh, we'll just get theta c in the product. So again, a categorical uh, uh, y uh, will just be theta c for whichever c y happens to be. Uh, another name, by the way, for the categorical distribution is the multi-nulli uh, distribution, kind of to draw the analogy between the Bernoulli distribution, which is uh, the uh, distribution over a uh, binary random variable, by the way, uh, named after a famous mathematician, statistician named Bernoulli, and the uh, multi-nulli, which is basically the same thing, but for a variable that can take on uh, more options. So either multi-nulli or categorical, you, you'll see as the name for this distribution. Okay, we're going to keep going. We're just defining a bunch of distributions here because we're going to need them later. Uh, fourth one is the multinomial distribution. Uh, again, you can see that this is just the analogous distribution to the binomial distribution for more uh, for a variable that has more options. So the multinomial distribution applies to uh, a count variable. So this uh, random variable, variable s is a variable that has uh, its 10 different values, each of which is an integer, a positive integer, or I guess a non-negative integer. Uh, so this could be the, in a bag of pictures, how many cats are there? How many humans are there? How many cars are there? That would be, S would be a vector of length three. So one specific value might be five, eight, and two. The probability of that specific vector is we do the same thing we do with the binomial distribution. Again, here we're taking the product over all different categories of the probability of that category times the number of times you've seen it. And then again, we need to do the same thing we did with the binomial distribution of putting in this multinomial coefficient. Uh, again, because this is the probability of seeing a specific order of cats, humans, and cars. This gives us all the possible, the number of possible orders that would give us those same numbers. Uh, that number 
that uh, coefficient happens to be this expression here. Now let's look at a distribution over a continuous random variable. So uh, this is the Gaussian distribution, specifically the univariate Gaussian distribution uh, that applies over a random variable y when y is some real value, uh, let's say between negative infinity and positive infinity, uh, and could be you know any um, you know any uh, floating point number. Uh, we're, uh, this is the univariate Gaussian distribution. We're going to look at the multivariate Gaussian distribution next week. So remember that when we have a distribution over a continuous random variable, we don't get a probability mass distribution. For example, this multinomial distribution, this is a probability mass distribution. It will give us the probability of seeing exactly 5, 8, and 2 cats, humans, and cars, respectively. The density of a uh, univariate Gaussian distribution is as follows. So a Gaussian distribution has two parameters, mu and uh, sigma or sigma squared. You'll see it written uh, both ways uh, sometimes. Uh, and, and it's important, you know, if you're, if you see a normal distribution to know if they're using the square version or the not square version. We'll try to be clear about that in this class. Um, that density of this uh, probability density function is as follows. This thing here, which depends just on the variance sigma squared, and then this thing on the right. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit. I'll talk a little bit more about where this comes from. Uh, in a little bit, e to the negative 1 over 2 sigma squared times y minus uh, mu squared. Again, y is our random variable. Uh, so this is, this is our, our probability density function here. Now, remember that, uh, and, and by the way, this density looks like this, this bell curve that we're all uh, probably very familiar with. Uh, lots of real distributions look very similar to this. Uh, remember that this, that the probability density function makes sense when you take its integral. So if we take the integral of 0 to some value a, let's draw a here, uh, of this probability density function here that I just wrote here, d y, uh, this equals the probability that y is less than a. Uh, so this is the CDF cumulative density function. And uh, it looks something like this, which makes sense that this, that this thing is the integral of this thing, or vice versa, that this thing is the derivative of this thing. So if we want to know, for example, what is the probability that y is less than 1? Uh, we just look this up uh, in the table, and we get that it's, let's say, 75% or so. The Gaussian distribution is the only uh, continuous distribution we're going to talk about just yet. We're going to see some more uh, continuous distributions later in the course. Um, uh, uh, by the way, another name for a univariate Gaussian distribution is a normal distribution. Uh, it's, it was given that name because, uh, for a reason I'll talk about uh, next, uh, Gaussian distributions come up all over the place. Uh, but you know that's not very good terminology because it implies that other distributions are somehow abnormal. Uh, and, and so uh, I think a better term to use is Gaussian distribution. So we're going to use that throughout the class. Uh, uh, by the way, that's where this n comes from, n for normal distribution. Uh, so like as I just said, Gaussian distributions come up all over the place. Uh, lots of real data are distributed according to a Gaussian distribution. Uh, and the reason for this is something called the central limit theorem. theorem. So that is, if I take a bunch of variables that are distributed uh, Anyway, so maybe each one is a 
uh, Bernoulli distribution or, uh, or has some wacky distribution with multiple peaks or whatever. If I take all those things together and I add them up, the more things I add up, uh, the closer I'll get to something that looks like a Gaussian distribution. That fact is called the central limit theorem. Uh, we're not going to prove it in this class. It's it's worth going and doing the proof yourself. Uh, uh, I, I, I recommend going and doing the proof, but we're not going to do it here. Uh, and so that's why you'll see, that's one of the reasons why you'll see, you'll see Gaussian distributions all over the place. Uh, and in fact, in machine learning, uh, much of the time we will be uh, assuming data follows a Gaussian distribution. OK, uh, that was a quick introduction uh, to a couple of univariate uh, probability distributions. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about multivariate probability distributions. Uh, I'm guessing most people have seen these distributions, but I think it's important to uh, go over the, them again, at least briefly, because we're going to be using them uh, very often for the rest of the course.